Nidhi is a new compositor everyone's been talking about. Scrollable tiling, clean config, smooth performance. But if you care about rising, about making your setup actually look good, Nidhi is missing some things, let's say. Five things specifically. And until they're added, Hyperland stays king. So, let's begin. The first thing is blur, okay? On Hyperland, you can blur. But on Nidhi, the blur is basically non-existent. On Hyperland, you can blur your terminal, your bar, your launcher, this one over here, your notification daemon, which is this one, and literally basically anything, even your lock screen, as well as your logout menu. So blur basically extends to every single part of the compositor, and it's not just on or off. You control the size, the passes, the noise, contrast, brightness, vibrancy, vibrancy, darkness, Hell, even the brightness, yeah, I already mentioned that, and you can control a lot more stuff. You can even blur specific windows differently using window rules. Now, if I show you the current blur config that I have right now, let's just pull up the config. So hyper modules would be inside decoration.conf. And if you notice, there's something a little different going on over here. This is not the same syntax that you would find on most Hyperland setups because most people, they just have their config inside of one big hyperland.conf file, which makes basically changing any single setting like looking for a needle in a haystack which makes it that much more complicated for that much less reason which is why what i've done here is basically just taken one file and then split it into multiple different files something that i like to call modularity and if you'd like to learn more about modularity and how you can make your own setup modular with stuff like this as well as learning how to make custom theme switchers like this one where all you have to do is just choose your favorite theme from a list of themes and hell, even make wallpaper switchers like this one as well. Not just that, but also everything else that I showed you from lock screens to logout menus and literally anything else that you could need to turn Hyperland into a desktop environment. You can click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where I teach you exactly how to do this from scratch so that you're not left just copying one dot file and another hoping that your setup is just going to work. That way, when you actually learn how to do this stuff yourself, you're not left begging the maintainer just to get some help. You are completely taking control of your own setup. And if that is what you want, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. It's full of videos like this one, which are two, which is basically two hours long, where I cover what theme switchers are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper-based theme switching, custom theme switching, and so on and so forth. Basically, a lot of stuff that's going to help you supercharge your Hyperland journey. And so if you want that, you can click the first link in the description and check the program. Now let's open the blur settings right over here. And these are the general decoration settings that I've got going on. There's rounding and there's border size and colors, gaps, all that fun stuff is there in Nitty as well. That's fantastic. But the only thing that isn't there is blur. And right now, these are my blur settings. As you can see, the blur size is going to be 10, the size of the kernel level blur. The passes is going to be three, which means that every window is going to be blurred three times. So if I actually reduce the one, reduce this to one, you'll find that the blur is much less prominent. If I raise it to something like five, it basically becomes an acrylic window, okay? It stops being blur and it just starts being more acrylic. And depending on what you actually want, you can set it up to be either way. And perfect, you also have noise, contrast, vibrancy. These are basically different options that allow you to control how exactly your blur looks. A 0.01 .01 on noise, basically just turns the noise way down. This is what one noise looks like. It makes the window basically look like a bunch of paper. And this is what it looks like without that. Contrast is how black the blacks are and how white the whites are. So simply put, vibrancy is the saturation of blurred colors. Vibrancy underscore darkness is another setting which controls the vibrancy, which controls basically the saturation of colors which are under a dark light. Pretty much like what you would find in exactly this scenario. So right now I have a terminal window open and behind that you have a bunch of colors, right? So vibrancy darkness controls the saturation of these colors, whether you want them to be heavily unsaturated or desaturated according to your preferences. Now Neri has none of this. There's an experimental PR that's floating around, but it's not merged, it's not stable, and even if it lands tomorrow, it won't have anywhere near this level of control. And if blur matters to your setup, and for most risers it does, this alone is a deal breaker, okay? That was the first one, that was blur. Now the second one is going to be custom Bezier curves. Great, now what about custom Bezier curves? Well, it's basically animation control. Hyperland lets you define custom Bezier curves for every animation. So for window open, you have one animation. For window close, you have one animation. For a workspace switch, you have one animation. You have fade, uh, this is going to be fade. Let's show you the fade. So this is going to be the notification, let's say. 
and you'll notice that there is a fade effect on this one. Might have been hovering over it, so you won't be able to. Okay, there you go. That's the fade effect. And there's a slide effect, especially when it comes to my notification daemon right here. There's a pop in effect, so on and so forth. And all of that is made possible by custom Bezier curves. If you want to see the curves that I have, okay, if you want to just check out my curves, that's going to be in hyper modules, uh, animations, anime.conf. Okay, right here, these are my Bezier curves smooth out, smooth in, overshot, soft snap, and fluent. So for my windows, I'm using overshot, that's what gives it the slight pop at the end. And for Windows Move, that actually looks pretty sick as well. If I show you that animation, it looks so beautiful. Absolutely buttery smooth animations, especially with control over the Bezier curves like you have on Hyperland. For the layers in and out, it's smooth in and soft snap respectively. And the rest, of course, for fade and workspaces, so on and so forth. Now, Niri gives you spring animations. That's it. Springs are fine, but they're one flavor. You can't shape the motion the way you can with Bezier's. Your animations will feel like Neri's animations and not yours. For Rising, motion is half the personality, and Hyperland lets you own it. That was the second one, okay? That was blurs. Uh, I mean, <laughs> custom Bezier curves. The third one is going to be layer animations, or basically animations for layers. Now, layers are things like your bar, your launcher, your notification pop-ups, anything that sits on top of your windows. On Hyperland, these animate. Your bar can fade in, okay? Your Rafi can slide down. Notifications can pop in with whatever curve that you set. On Neri, the layers just appear. There's no animation. They're either there or they're not. It sounds kind of small, but it's the difference between a setup that actually feels alive and one that feels static. Every time you open your launcher or you get a notification, Hyperland makes it smooth. Neri just blinks it onto the screen. And by the way, if you're watching this and thinking, I want my Hyperland setup to actually look like this one as well, I have a program, as I've mentioned previously, called Hyper Accelerator, where I discuss each of the topics that I'm covering over here in much more detail so that you can configure a setup like this on your own, line by line, so that you understand how everything works and ties together, which helps you basically make more functions if you have to, expand the feature set, or hell, even troubleshoot if things just end up going wrong. So if you want that for yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, the next thing is going to be window rules, okay? Window rules. Hyperland's window rules are deep. <laughs> they're, they're deep. They're as deep as a deep ocean. So let me show you what they look like, what mine look like. So that would be in windowrules.conf. I have this many window rules. Now, of these window rules, the most interesting is, of course, going to be the layer rules, which is just going to turn on blur for waybar and animations. It's just controlling waybar stuff. This is controlling sway and see stuff. This is something to do with the blur. Basically, turning off blur on pixels that have opacity less than 0.5%, or not 0.5%, but 50%. This is for W logout, just adding the fade animation and then blurring that in. And this is for Rafi. So these are all layer rules. As for window rules, this is what I have. I have suppress event, so this is just by default, so this is to ignore maximized requests. Sometimes a window is just going to go into maximized mode and that might end up making the window look odd, so it's just going to suppress that. Then you have the right-click menu blur, which used to plague Chromium browsers back in the day, that's turning that off. Then here we have pop-up behavior, that I've commented that out. Then we have float center, basically anything that has something to do with a dialog, that's just going to be centered. Also, we are centering all of this stuff. This is actually a duplicate, so we can get rid of that. There you go. And that's basically what this is doing, just centering a lot of dialog boxes. Uh, those are the window rules that I've currently set up. Now, as you just saw, you can target windows by class, by title, by whether they're floating, full screen, pinned, whatever. And then you can also change literally almost anything about them. Opacity, blur, rounding, border color, animation style, size, position, so on and so forth. You can make Firefox always open on Workspace 2 if you wanted, with no blur, 90% opacity. You can make your music player fl float in the corner with rounded corners and a red border. You can match Windows with regex. Now, Neri has window rules, but they are limited. There are fewer match conditions. There are fewer properties that you can change, and the things that make Hyperland Rises feel polished, the per window tweaks, you can't do most of them on Neri just yet. Now, the last and final thing for this video is going to be modular configs. Okay, now, what do I mean by this? If you have noticed the config structure that I have displayed right over here, you will notice that it doesn't quite look the same. If I show you my hyperland.com file, you'll notice that that doesn't look quite the same either, because there's this source keyword. 
Hyperland has a source keyword. You can split your config into separate files. There's one for keybinds, one for window rules, there's one for animations, one for monitors, so on and so forth, right? Then you source all of them into your main config. This keeps stuff very clean. So when you configure 500 lines, you don't want everything in literally one file because as I've mentioned earlier, that makes looking for any particular setting like finding a needle in a haystack. It turns out to make your life hell and not just that, but then you end up so like wasting so much time just looking for the setting instead of actually changing the setting itself. Not fun. So you want to be able to open, let's say keybinds.conf or just binds.conf over here and then just see keybinds. You want to be able to open your plugins now conf just see plugins. That is why this is so powerful. And as of right now, Niri doesn't have this. It's one file. Everything goes in config.kdl. The more you customize, the harder it gets to manage. But Hyperland solved this problem, and Niri just hasn't yet. Now look, I I have to tell you this, okay? Niri isn't bad whatsoever, okay? The scrollable tiling is genuinely great. In fact, I loved it so much that I used to have tiling as my default layout for pretty much two to three months. So if I show you uh, would this, hold on, let, let me show you my layout. So dwindle, right? Previously, if I just undo the edit, it shows the layout as scrolling because that, that's literally what my scrolling layout, what my layout was. It was set to scrolling. And the scrolling layout, honestly, whoever made it was a genius. Now, the only thing is the reason why I switched away from it is because its implementation on Hyperland needs a little bit more work because right now it's a bit buggy. Just take a look at what happens when I switch workspaces like this. Okay, hold on you're not actually able to notice it now because of the animation but basically this window okay like this window right over here is going to show its ghost as i switch to another workspace but right now because the animation is set to slide fade you're not going to be able to see that but anyway that was the major reason why i switched away from it that bug so i like the tiling i like all the other features that it has like a built-in screenshot tool and clean config syntax but if you're trying to rice, which I am, I want blur, custom animations, layer polish, granular window rules, and a config that doesn't become a mess. That's what's important to me. And Hyperland gives you the tools for that. Nearly doesn't, not yet. And if you want to learn, actually learn how to use those tools, how to set up blur properly, write window rules that actually make sense, config, configure animations that feel right, that's exactly what Hyper Accelerator covers. You configure animations that just feel right and everything else that I mentioned. There's no more copying dot files and hoping that they work. So if you want that, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe. And guess what? I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.